Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's do some examples where we utilize the potential energy of a compressed spring. So here we have three examples like that. The first one, we have a block of m of mass m starting at zero velocity being dropped from a height h on top of a spring. At this point, the spring is not being compressed. At some point, the block will hit the spring, the spring will be compressed, and at some moment in time, the velocity will be zero before the spring pushes the block back up. The question is, how far did the spring compress? So we use the energy equation again. The work put into the system will be zero. The initial potential energy, well, that depends upon where the zero height is. And let's put the zero height at the top of the spring when it's compressed so that the total height above that point would be h plus x, x being the distance compressed. So the initial potential energy is mg times h plus x. There's no kinetic energy because we start from rest. At the very end, there is potential energy, but it's the energy stored in the spring, which is 1 half kx squared. There's no height because we're now at the zero height. There's no kinetic energy because it's not moving and no energy loss because we assume no friction, no wind resistance, anything like that. Notice then, if we solve this equation, well, we can initially solve it because we'll end up with a quadratic equation, an x squared term, an x to the first term, and a constant term. And then, of course, if you have the proper values for m, k, and g, and you plug that in, and for h, of course, and you plug that in, you can then solve that quadratic equation. What if we have a situation where we take a block, we compress a spring with it, we hold it in place, and then we let go. The spring has spring constant k, we compress it at distance x, the block goes, there's no friction anywhere on the surface, then it goes up a hill and incline where the angle is theta, we reach a certain height h, and the question is how far along the incline will the block slide before coming to a stop? Use the energy equation again. There's no work put into the system. Now you say, well, wait a minute, you, you did work. You pushed the, the block into the spring. Yes, that's true. So we can account for that force times distance, or we can account for the amount of energy stored in the spring, so we can do both at the same time. That's double dipping again. So we're going to assume that we don't put the work into the system. It's already there, 1 half kx squared in the form of potential energy. And at that moment, nothing is moving, so kinetic energy is zero. At the very end, we don't have to worry about anything in the middle. At the very end, it's reached the height h, which is mgh. The spring is no, no longer compressed, so there's no potential energy there. And the block comes to a stop, so there's zero kinetic energy. And there's no friction anywhere, so zero energy loss. We solve that equation for h, but then we realize, well, we don't want h, we want d. And the relationship between h and d is h equals d sine theta. So when we plug that in, we get the correct value. For d, the distance, the block slid up the hill. What if there is friction on the hill? There is on the, on the incline, so mu is not equal to zero. Well, then we're going to have everything else the same, but now we also have the energy loss term. Force friction times distance. The work done to overcome friction is the energy loss. Force friction will be equal to the normal force times mu. The normal force is mg cosine theta. So mg cosine theta times mu is the friction force. You multiply times the distance to get the energy lost. mg cosine theta mu times d. And then if we solve that equation for d, we end up with this result right here. So here's some good examples of how to deal with the energy equation when we're dealing with a spring being compressed. And that is how it's done.